Welcome folks, today we're going to be taking a look at the cheapest CPU currently available in the Ryzen 5 range. I'm talking about the £165 R5-1400. Now if you've watched any of the other videos on my channel lately, you're going to know that I've been really impressed by my Ryzen 7 setup, but realistically it's the mid to lower range where most people are going to buy or build PCs, and in order to make a dent in Intel CPU dominance, the Ryzen 5 range is perhaps entering the most important battleground there is. The R5 range features both 4 and 6 core unlocked processors with either 8 or 12 threads respectively, and when we take a look at the competition, we can see just how competitive these AMD chips look on paper. Price wise for the blue team, we're going to be looking at something along the lines of an i5-7400, which is 4 cores, 4 threads, and runs at a base clock of 3GHz with a max 4 core boost of 3.3, or something along the lines of the i3-7350K, which is 2 cores and 4 threads, but is an impressive headroom for overclocking, a spiritual successor to my old Pentium G3258 in many ways, well, apart from the price. So on paper at least, this 1400 has a lot to offer, with its 8 available threads, 8 megabytes of L3 cache, and it should make light work of any multitasking or mild productivity use. But as we all know, the AM4 platform is still in its infancy, and although it's been getting regular updates, gaming performance is still not quite there yet. So let's see how this baby R5-1400 gets on with a few benchmarks and see how it compares to my own R7-1700. We're going to be using the same ASUS B350M-A motherboard I used for my R7 tests, and we're going to keep the GTX 970 from a previous test simply because it's a good indication of the kind of performance you can expect from a mid-range card. We're using 8GB of DDR4 RAM and we're running Windows 10, and I've overclocked this 1400 CPU to the same 3.7GHz as I run on my R7 system. But it should be noted, this lull chip does go much higher, tickling 4 GHz with relative ease. First up, we're going to jump into Rise of the Tomb Raider, running at 1920 by 1080p on the high preset. The little R5 returned a benchmark score of 61 FPS, compared with the R7's 63 FPS, so a pretty negligible difference. Far Cry Primal on the Ultra preset with the HD texture pack enabled sees pretty much the same thing. The 1400 returns an average frame rate of 55 with minimums of 42, and this is nearly in the margin of error considering the R7-7800 returned 57 and 43. Crisis 3 now in the 1700 returned a silky smooth frame rate just below 90 FPS on average, with minimum settling around the 60 FPS mark. The 4 core R5 did see a slight drop in the averages, down to 85 FPS, which is around 5 or 6% lower, but it was in the minimums where we could see the disparity between the R5 and R7, with the R7-1700's multi-threaded goodness accounting for a 15% discrepancy in the minimum frame rates. Finally, we run Hitman at 1920-1080 and the deal setting set to high, and this is another title where we start to see some of that benefits that will be coming in the future where more threads actually count. The 1400 returned a really respectable average frame rate of 75 FPS and a minimum frame rate of 44, but this kind of paled in comparison to the R7-1700 which returned 92 on the average and 59 on the minimum. So with these results, what can we make of the cheapest R5 CPU? Well, although in heavily multi-threaded games, it's starting to get a good old-fashioned schooling from the R7-1700. It is half the price and half the core count. The fact that it held up as well as it did was so impressive though. So in the end, there's really just two questions. Firstly, from a gaming standpoint, should you choose this over a similarly priced Intel chip? Well, there are some situations that are heavily dependent on single-threaded performance, and the price equivalent i3-7350K will be faster in those situations. The problem though is buying that dual-core CPU, and it's the same conundrum that I run into myself using the G3258. Games are becoming much more heavily multi-threaded, and this problem for lesser core CPUs is only going to increase. Like it or not, games are starting to favour more cores, and the handicap of only having two cores and four threads mean that the 7350K is already teetering on irrelevance. So how about a locked i5, say? It's the same price as the 7350K, it's the same price as this R5 processor. Well, considering the R5 is unlocked and it can overclock to pretty much 4 GHz, and it's got those extra four threads, it kind of seemed like a no-brainer to me. 
and realistically, with the introduction of the R5 range, anything other than the unlocked 7600K, it just doesn't really make that much sense. But considering that costs £330, it's positioned firmly away from this 1400. So what we have then, is a budget chip, it's something special. It's not going to shatter benchmark records or set the world alight, it's just an honest CPU unlocked to those who want to tinker, and it's great for multitasking in production workloads, and it's still got enough grunt to tango with Intel's sub £200 offerings when it comes to gaming. The 8 threads available is going to keep this CPU relevant for much longer than a comparable i5, and even then, the AM4 platform is still going to be around, leaving you with a good upgrade path for the future. If you're looking to build a PC in this area of the market, the smallest offering in the Ryzen line could be exactly what you need. And I'm actually a tad disappointed that I've got to put this particular chip into a build for somebody else. So on that somewhat sad thought, I hope you enjoyed this R5 1400 quick look. Don't overlook it, it is a good chip. But as always folks, thanks for watching and thank you to everyone who subscribed since the last video. Remember to use those thumbs and hit that button if you've not done so already. Take care and I'll see you all soon.